Yeah, good evening, everyone. Um, last week, um, we stopped uh, in conflict management. We've really covered a lot, covered a lot last week. And uh, <clears throat> everybody's been uh, trying, both you guys are uh, turning up well, doing your assignments, and that's quite impressive. This week, um, believe me, uh, this week we are going to be done with project management. So after this week, we are going to be a half-baked project manager. I said half-baked because we don't have practical experience. You can't be calling yourself a project manager without uh, at least uh, executing any project or delivering any project. It's when you must have delivered at least one project successfully, then you can then say um, you are now a project manager. So uh, starting this week uh, with uh, uh, project management tools. We we'll look at project management tools. Um, then we we'll look at um, soft skills in project management. Then we we'll look at um, project management um, life cycle, managing a project, end to end management of a project from beginning to the end from initiation to the closure. That is a, a project management life cycle. And I think that will bring us to the end of a project management uh, module. And with that, you can go and uh, confront the market. And I believe you can, um, you can turn things around with all these uh, skills. A project management tools, which we are, we are talking about, we are talking about tools here, we're talking about softwares, softwares that you need to use in doing your job as a project manager, software that can help you um, to deliver your job successfully, uh, deliver a project on time and on budget, uh, and on specification, you know, these are the three things involved. You need to deliver the project on time, on budget, and uh, you need to, 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 to be um, towards the specified uh, criteria or what the, the, the um, what the, the stakeholders want. So to do that, these um, uh, tools will help you with your um, uh, knowledge, techniques, methodologies you've already known, then you need these tools uh, to help you. Number one is uh, Microsoft, uh, Microsoft Projects. The Microsoft Projects, uh, so many of you must, must have heard about it. It's you for planning. It's you for planning um, your project. Another one is um, project labor. This uh, project labor is um, a clone of Microsoft projects. It's a free software. Is, a, is an open source, a free open source. So you, although so many companies um, using Microsoft uh, projects, and it's very costly. So, so many people, so many um, startups find it difficult to, So, so many startups um, find it uh, very costly. So that's why so many people are now moving to project labor. Another one is uh, 
Microsoft Office. Microsoft Office is a, a collection of Microsoft applications, Office applications that will help you for, to collaborate uh, with your team uh, to manage projects very well. Is a whole workplace suite. It's, um, it's costly. So it's very costly. So so many people, so many comp, so many startups have struggled to to to, to afford the um, the cost, and that's why um, Basecamp uh, came in. Basecamp took advantage of how costly Microsoft Office is and uh, came into the the market and they drive a lot of customers. Basecamp have free version, but the free version is limited. The Gov paid version that really gives you a lot of chance to collaborate within your project team. Basecamp can help you to manage so many projects at the same time. Uh, but with the paid plan, the free plan can only help you, you can only um, execute uh, three projects at a time with Basecamp and uh, a number of like uh, 20 users at a time. So if you want to exceed three projects or uh, 20 users, then you go for paid plans. Then we have uh, Jira. Jira have a, a paid version and free version is for project tracking, help you to track your projects, know where your project is and you know track like bugs when you are working with the developers, help developers to, to track bugs easily. We have a Trello. Trello is a go-free uh, paid version of Trello. Is 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 a, a software with a Kanban that help you to visualize your project. There are so many of them, so many, like um, Monday.com, uh, Asana. These are like Microsoft Office and uh, Basecamp, uh, Zoho, have so many of them. But these ones I've listed here is the ones that I will recommend because Monday.com is not free. Asana is not free, you know, and so all those ones. So you still need to learn, you can go on your own to learn some of all those ones. But if you if you know how to use one, like if you know how to use um, Basecamp very well, if all, all others are, will become a walkover for you because it's just almost the same thing. It's just different names. So most of them are, uh, build within uh, the same mindset of managing projects. So we are going to look at them one by one to see how it looks and some of the the the, the features and benefits can get from some of them. We are starting with. Um, Uh, starting with Microsoft Project. This is how Microsoft Project looks like. Uh, Microsoft Project is a project management software by Microsoft designed to assist a project manager in developing a shadow assigning resources to tasks, tracking progress, managing the budget, and analyzing workloads. So that is uh, what Microsoft um, Project does. It helps you to break down like, uh, your, your, from your breakdown structure, you, you have to, 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 to bring um, this, um, critical to create a critical part. We've, we've done critical part before, but now we are seeing it in practical terms. So you can see all these tasks 
that's the critical part of a project. Uh, you, you show the, the, the task, the duration, the start date, the finish date, and budget, baseline. There's a lot you can do with this. We'll have time maybe within the week to look into some of these core, more especially either Microsoft uh, project or project labor. So you see it in real time, how it works. Uh, so there is all even um, useful YouTube videos that you can equally watch after the, the training to give you more insight about how these uh, applications works. But this is how it works. This is your project plan. As you are looking at it here in this uh, window, this is how a project plan will help you to create a project plan. This is a project plan, uh, plan that we are uh, uh, looking at. Here you see the tasks. Um, uh, for, for instance, you see mobilization, take 10 days. See when the mobilization will start and see when the mobilization ends. And you see Gantt chart at the, red, at the hand, uh, right hand showing the, the diagram in, um, in, a, in, in, a bar, in a bar chart. So that is it. That is how Microsoft Projects was. And when you are missing your, your timeline, it will be reflecting on this uh, Gantt chart. That's how we use it to manage projects, and they call it track projects. So with this, you will, be, you will know when you are lagging, when you are missing your timeline, start lagging on your project, you start showing, then you know that you are not performing in your project management. That's the effectiveness of some of these applications. It will show you how your project is performing. If your project is not performing, if you are looking at your yeah, yeah, yeah. Your Microsoft um, your project will know that you are not uh, performing. So these are how it works. And when you reach uh, a milestone, it will show you that you've reached a milestone. That is that is it. So some of these things are better when you do it practical using the application in real time, not like in this um, uh, pictured one. So we'll, we'll try as much as we can to make our time to, to look at it in real time. The next one is a project labor. Project labor is a free and open source project management software intended as a standalone replacement for Microsoft projects. Project labor has been downloaded 5.5 million times in 200 countries globally. This is to show you how powerful this uh, project labor is. You know, one good thing in IT is that if you want to go into IT or if you want to manage your business IT, even if you don't have money, there, there is a lot of free, pro, free softwares, open source. Because all these um, softwares, you see so many developers, they will just come together as a community and develop one, develop one um, software. If, they, if, if all these developers, they see that uh, people are using this uh, software so much, this software is serving the society, is a, is a kind of a way to give back to the society. Like these 5.5 million people are, are downloaded, 
these might be companies that are struggling, maybe startups that can't afford to, to use Microsoft uh, projects. But now they cannot continue to do their, their, their business effectively with project labor. If you look at Microsoft and look at project labor, they're almost the same thing. Like this is the critical part. This is the tax. Recycling committee, closing the project, electricity subcommittee, okay, see duration, see uh, start time. If you push this gun chart um, forward a bit towards the right, then you start seeing even the closing time, uh, sign resources, and a lot of them. And then if you click on this histogram, you start seeing a, represent, a chart, you know, a kind of uh, a dashboard that we are seeing all your, how your project is working. Okay, if you look at here again, see, you see work, break, work breakdown structure. So you can see that project labor equally have work break, breakdown structure. And this is the report. If you cl uh, uh, click here, you can see report. You see the report of your project. So this is um, uh, how it is. And that shows you how powerful it is. Now, even if you are, you are your company, if you, if you can't afford Microsoft, you can download this. It's free. And I want all of you to, that's why I was telling you people that you can't do this course very well without having a, a computer. You don't have a laptop. Yes, yeah, you can. So you need a laptop to be able to, to so perform in this. Um, you need a laptop to be able to perform in this uh, in this program. Like this is a free software, but you can't download it on your phone. You can't use your. Phone. I don't. It, it will not. Even if you download it, I don't know. But uh, I don't think you, you, there is um, an Android version of this. So it's, I think the only thing we have for now is a desktop version. So you cannot download it on your phone. Even if you download it, it's not going to, to show very well. It's not going to, you know, it's not going to make a, uh, the best out of it. So, but this is, if you are serious about your IT career, you must have something like this, this kind of uh, software downloaded on your um, system. I have it on my system. You need to download, I have, um, um, Microsoft project, my system. So these are the kind of things you download it, you play around it, you know? So these are the things as a professional, things you should be playing around with. You know, even all these, um, um, our undergraduate students, these are the kind of things they should, applications they be uh, learning how to use. By the time you finish your university, you find out that you become uh, very powerful, knowing how to use a lot of application. Like now, so many of you have know how to use uh, uh, Lucid Chat. That is a very powerful tool. Lucid Chat, Draw.io, um, Visio. Uh, you can see Visit, um, Lucid Chat um, is not. Um, it's not uh, all that um, free. I think there is um, a, premium, a premium version and free version. But something like draw.io is, um, I think it's 100% free. And it gives you everything you need to, 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 to you, are, you need to have to, to do your business analysis uh, job, do your diagramming, uh, uh, process mapping, uh, flow charting, and the rest of them. So, uh, project labor is very powerful. So, I encourage you if you already have a good laptop, you need to make spaces 
for all these um, softwares. If you, you need to delete some of the things in your soil, it is in a big provision for things that matters in your career. If actually you want to progress um, in this career path, we we'll have time to look at it very well. But as you can see, this is um, a project plan. Yeah, the project plan is a uh, uh, BSBP 510A sustainability project. So that is it about um, project labor. We'll make our time to look at it in real time so that we can see how it works. This is just a picture of it. Is for project planning. Then we come to Microsoft 365. That is um, Office 365. Microsoft 365 combined the latest business applications such as Office 365, Outlook, Excel, PowerPoint more with Windows 10 and best in class security, including EM um, plus S, formerly known as Enterprise Mobility Suite. So this is um, uh, Office 365. It combines all the office works applications, anything you need to work effectively in an office is included in um, Microsoft uh, 365. And most of the companies have been working, they have been using uh, uh, Microsoft 365 and it makes their life easier. You know, everything, you've, you've got everything you need to work very well. So, and that's why so many big, big companies are going for it. So you won't have excuse why you don't, you don't deliver. You can't say that because this and that. Everything, you've got it in Microsoft 365. But the other side of it is that it's very costly. Yes, most small companies cannot afford it. That's, that's the, even uh, at times, big companies, with big uh, number of uh, employees, they struggle because of the cost, but it's very, very effective. As you can see, there is a uh, email there, um, Microsoft Word, Excel, PowerPoint, uh, Microsoft Beam, everything, everything you can think of to work in an office is there. And when you log into it, this is the how it looks. More especially if you are at the if you are using Microsoft Beam or Fit, which is for collaboration. You can use it to have your meeting, collaborate with your team. You know, have like video meeting anytime you want it. If you are working with someone, even if I just call you, okay, I want to have a chat with you, you can just start meeting immediately. So you can chat, you can track, your, you can manage your project, like here you can see it's on conversation. You can be chatting with every member of your team at the same time. You can see file where you can upload your files, you can make notes, you can plan, see plan, and here you can plan. If you click this a plus arrow, you open up and you see more functionalities. It's very powerful. I've, I've used it so many times and I wish I'll continue to use it in uh, uh, workplaces. It's very powerful. I, I love it, but it's costly. Not everybody can uh, afford it. That's why we have uh, other alternatives. It's mainly for collaboration. Collaboration, working effectively in an office, remotely. So, that's 
um, all we can say for Microsoft um, 365, maybe if you are lucky enough, you can get a job in a, an organization where um, they use it. So once you get job, they will get a license for you because all the license is per user. You know, they just apply for a license and get you a license and you start using it. And that's it for Microsoft. But if you if you don't if 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 you don't have the opportunity to use, there are so many other good ones that can give you good experience as well. Um, the next thing is Basecamp. Basecamp is very good as well. It's very powerful. You know, you can uh, do a lot with Basecamp. You can manage so many projects. You can interact with your team. Yeah. Base, uh, base uh, camp is, is very, very simple and powerful. You know, got a lot of uh, functionalities that can keep you and your team moving. You don't have to complain. You deliver your project effectively if you really want to. So you help you to, to manage, track your project, collaborate, do everything. And above all, they have free version where one can start learning how to use it, or you can use it to be managing your if you are a small business that can't afford um, the whole the whole license, you can start with um, a small the free version, even if uh, managing your, your personal business. Uh, a project is very good, you know. So, like here, this is a project building BC3 is a project, and you can see all these people are project members, project team members. Everybody here, you can see their picture, their avatar here. They are all project team member. So if you want to see any of your team members, just click, you see the details of your, all your team members here. So if you look at here, this is to do, to help you to create what need to be do. You need to create all the tasks. As a project manager, this is where you create your tasks and deliverable. And this is where, if you create it here, you assign it to, to a member of your team, your team member here. So that's how you use um, uh, base, um, base camp. And here you, you can schedule dates, you can schedule dates of what you need to do and what you don't need to do so that, and uh, automate it. So when it's time for you to do something, it will automatically remind you about your, your engagement. So, and this is a message board where you can be receiving messages. This is a um, campfire. Campfire is where all the project team comes to interact and gossip. You know, it's not like uh, yeah, everybody can hear, you can come chat. Just like we have uh, our, um, our WhatsApp group. It's like a group, a, a group in a, in a base camp where everybody chats. This is automatic checking. It shows where what everybody is doing, you know? And here is a docs and files. This is a, the project repository where everybody, um, you see what is everybody's doing. Uh, let me see if I have uh, my base camp open. Let me see if it's open so you can see. Um, yeah, this is my base camp. Yeah, I have a project running in base camp. This is, let me show you. This is base camp. 
That's how Basecamp works. You can create more projects here. This is uh, all this you can, this is home lineup. Here yeah, you should line up of uh, maybe the track your project. But I have one project running. I have a student here that I'm mentoring on uh, business analysis. And this is the project we are using for now. So look at it. So as you can see, this is the project started on 4th of February and it's going to end on 4th of um, April. You see this green color? This is where we are. So we're almost halfway to finishing our project. You see how we track your project in Basecamp. This, uh, this is our message board. Here this year, you, you can create more this thing from here. If I want to create a new message, I'll create a new message here and I'll send it. And everybody in this project will receive my message as a project manager. And you know what I'm saying if I'm trying to schedule a meeting. And this is our to do. See, we receive project mandate, project charter, assemble project team. These are what we have done. Define role, identify scope. This is what we've done already. You see, we've done all these things. And this is um, where we are getting at. So this is to do. And let me go back again. Docs and file. This is our docs and file. This is how our project, we are still in the initial stage, but once we are through with our initial stage, we are going to move very fast. So this is all the documents here uh, in our initial stage. So everything relating this initial stage, like racing matrix, you can see stakeholder analysis, you see data collection, you see requirement analysis, you see, uh, project charter, project mandates, this is what we've done already. And uh, that's, um, you see here, is where we are putting all our project um, templates for this project template. So I upload it for my trainee, here is, where it's just come to pick, if you need to assign a, a an assignment or a task for, for him comes here to pick the template to do the job and that's it. So that is um, base camp for you. If I want to schedule a, maybe a meeting or anything, I can come here and here I'll schedule a meeting. So, and then project activity to see what everybody is doing. This is where I track what is everybody. If you are not doing your job or if you are not playing, if you are not logging in, if I come here, I see what everybody's doing, doing. Like on Thursday, see, see all activities and that's it. So that's how um, base camp work. So I'll stop and go back to our, temp, our slide. So that's it. That's um. That's all um about Basecamp. It's an online collaboration app that let people manage their work together and communicate with one another. You can use it to keep track of all the tasks, deadlines, files, discussions, and announcement that happen around the work. What again do you need to manage your projects? very simple and clean. So that's all we have for this camp for now. We might, if you have time, you can equally go back, but I've shown you people how it was in real time. So we might not even, so if you want to learn it personally, you can go and learn it personally. Another powerful <clears throat> tool, is Jira. A lot of you must have heard about Jira. It's very powerful. So when you are doing your 
agile uh, scrum project delivery uh, it's very difficult to to run away from jira because it's one of the most powerful tools for you to collaborate with your developers you know it's good for tracking tracking bugs jira is designed to help team of all kind manage work originally jira was designed as a bug and issue tracker is an agile scrum work management solution that powers collaboration so it's mainly on agile scrum if you want to get the best out of it is on agile scrum as you can see this is the the, visual, the visualization how it was. You look at here, this is the project team. All the project team members, you can see them here. You know? And uh, one good thing with it is that you, you, you manage your project and list all the, <coughs> list your roadmap. Roadmap is your requirement. Your epic list, that is the roadmap. And then you start breaking breaking them down into project backlog backlogs. And when you are breaking them back into backlogs, you can see them here. Back backlog here. <clears throat> that is it. Like layout, usability test, swift, UI exploration, field spec priority. You can see it here. So this is backlog. And here in backlog, you have not started doing anything. But when you start working, then you move it from backlog to here. You can co configure all this uh, heading here. Uh, this is Kanban board. You can configure it, configure it to, to do. Uh, here can be um, doing, and here can be done. You configure it the way you want. And you'll be seeing everything very very uh, uh, good and if anything if there is a problem if any or any of the team member like a developer encounters a problem if you right click on any of this board you create a ticket and when you create a ticket like that when the scrum master log in scrum master will see that a ticket has been created in any 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 of this board that you created a ticket it will um, highlight on red showing that there is a bug. A bug is error. So, and a, 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 a problem. And when the Scrum Master sees a bug, the Scrum Master will move it swiftly to find out what's the problem and then work as uh, much as uh, he's, uh, uh, he can to resolve the the issue and get the team working. So that's how everybody collab. Everybody know you know what you are doing. The Scrum Master is busy looking out for 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 bugs where there is error and then solving the problem. You know, if he's just out there to look out if there is any impediment, then Scrum Master will solve it. That's how Scrum Master. Everybody uses Jira. It's very powerful. I think still have. Uh, uh, it used the, the we used to have um, the the free version used to be very juicy, but a lot of people now using it, and I think is now they are limiting the usage, so it's becoming scarce. But I think they still have free version. We'll, later we'll look at it, and uh, maybe you create a mini pro, uh, a demo project there to see how it works. The next one is um, Trello. Trello is just um, like um, Jira, but the only thing is that Jira um, have got more functionalities than Trello. Uh, Trello is more of uh, just uh, 
uh, Kanban board for visualization. It, it, it gives you a very beautiful Kanban more than every of all these uh, uh, other softwares. And that's what is popular for. You, you, you can manage your, your team in a very beautiful landscape. As you can see from here, if you to do uh, in progress, pending, done. So any activity you've just done, you move it to the next stage. If you finish with that stage, you move it to the next stage. If you finish with that stage, you move it to the next stage. And that's how when a project manager comes in, a project manager will then see what is just looking at here. You know what is going on. You know where, where everybody is. You know who is doing who, who is doing what. And uh, that is it. These are the things that gives you um, power to manage your project very well. Because when you are seeing what is everybody is doing, then if you know how your project is moving, whether your project is uh, moving well, if everybody, if people, if your team members are not doing what they are supposed to do, if they are supposed to be on task A and they are slow, you then ask questions. Everything have timeline. Even though you might assign a project, uh, a task that, uh, look, you need to do this within one week. But you, you don't need to wait at uh, the end of the week for you to, have you done? No. You need to be monitoring the, the team member on daily basis to make sure that they are doing their job. That is your work as a project manager. You might, that is, you don't need, you are, you are not doing any, anything uh, outside that. You make sure that team, everybody's doing their job. You assign job to them, then you monitor, make sure they do, they, they, they do their job on daily basis, not uh, at the end of the week. They may start waiting for everybody, come and bring your, submit your, they still need to submit your report, their written reports. But on daily basis, they need to, to show what they've done, what they plan to do. And that's what is uh, in Scrum. We call it daily Scrum. Everybody needs to sh uh, show what they are doing on a daily basis. What challenges are you having? As a, as a project manager, you should be capable of asking all these questions. So this is it. Um, the, the selected um, tools, which I believe will profit you as a, as a project manager. You can see when I select paid version, I select a free version of it. So you won't have excuse to say, I, I, I can't use this one because of. So if like anyone that is um, uh, paid will have free version of it. So you can start using the free version to start learning. And then, the next thing we do is to move to this um, essential soft skills because it does not end in mastering the softwares and it does not end in uh, mastering the, the, the techniques and the methodologies. You must have a soft skill that will guide you. So these are the essential soft skills we need to have, you need to have a, a lot of soft skills for you to perform very well as a project manager. It's not just um, uh, for you to, to be good in uh, computing, uh, cramming methodologies, cramming techniques, mastering all the techniques, but you should be able to be influential. You need to earn respect from your team. You need to carry yourself very well. You know, you need to be influential. To be influential, you need to be have policies. It don't mean it not doesn't mean for for you for your team team members to be to start to 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 be scared of you. You know, you need to command respect, and the only way you can do that is, uh, you know, when you respect other people, try to be respectful. You know. And try to, 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 to mean what you say. When you say something, you mean it. If you are, you are talking about late coming, make sure you are going to be the first person to come. 
in a meeting. You, you, you have to be in the meeting like five minutes before the meeting starts. So you have the guts to tell any of your team member off for coming late. But if you are the one that always, uh, as a project manager, everybody will be waiting for you. And uh, what not, you don't have any moral um, right. What what right do you have? What mark do you have to 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 talk to your team member about uh, late uh, coming? Why you don't uh, respect the time schedule? So you must be influential, and these are some of the ways you can earn their respect. If you want to preach against something, uh, start uh, leading by example, and that is what is um, what agile is preaching. You know, agile preach for you to be uh, a servant leader. You do things how to teach people how to do things is for you to do it. Not uh, you relax and we'll be um, drinking um, tea and coffee and they be, hey, do that. No, you need to start, start doing it. Telling people, yeah, come, come, let's do this. That's how you command respect. The next one is communication. You must be a good communicator. Being a good communicator is not just speaking good English. Good English is good, but good communication is when you are talking to, your, to, to someone and the person is responding, showing that the person is understanding what you say. That's good communication. You can communicate well in different language. So that's why I said it's not about speaking good English. You can communicate in Hausa language. You can communicate in Igbo language. You can communicate in Yoruba language. There are so many other big, uh, 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 big, big languages in Nigeria, even outside Nigeria, like in French, Chinese, Japan. So as a project manager, depending on where you are working, which you must be able to communicate. You must be able to address issues. Communication is not just verbal communication. We have um, body language. It's still a way of communication. You know, you can use uh, eye contact, can be a, a very powerful communication. You and your team must be able to, to have a good communication strategy. You must, these are the things. A good communicator, you must. In a project, not just being a good to show you are a good communication, you must have a communication plan. Communication plan, you have to follow your communication plan, plan together with your uh, verbal communication, uh, written communication, body language. These are good ways to communicate as a project manager. You must be able to address your, issue, your, your team. You must be able to, to facilitate the workshop. It's not that simple. You might think communication, even if you are a good, uh, if you are good, uh, if you have a good command, good command in the English language. Uh, communication is not that easy because some people find it difficult to address the public. So if you, if you are part of the people that uh, uh, cannot talk to the public, then you have to practice how to communicate, how to address it. Because as a project manager, you will be addressing your team all the time, project team all the time. You are the leader. Every time and every now and then, you have to be addressing them, telling them what is coming on, what is the latest from the management, what's, what's happening? You need to be communicating. So you need to learn how to communicate. The next one is effective team leader. You need to know how to lead your team effectively. And to do that, 
you must know how to bond your team together. Team bonding is a very big way of uh, effective leadership. When they are bonding very well, it will help you very well to manage them. You know, it's a very um, powerful way of managing your team. You know, leading them, making sure there is um, discipline, making sure there is respect, trust. These are the things that will help you to be, you need to install trust in your team. You need to make sure that your team members, everybody earns their respect. So these are the way um, things you, do, you need to do that your, your team will, will have trust and follow you as a good leader. Negotiation skill. You need to know how to negotiate. If uh, you, are the, you are the bridge between your team and the, the stakeholders or the top management, you need to know how to negotiate on behalf of your team. You need to protect your team. If you have um, uh, a project scope and they want to, to add more uh, job, more, more, more requirements on what you are doing already, you should be able to defend your team. No, so you can't just allow them to anybody to just come into your team and do anything they want. You have to protect your team. And to do that, you must be able to negotiate on their behalf. This uh, the, uh, what negotiation skills uh, means. Conflict management. You when you start working as a project manager, you find out that. Team members, you, know, you can have team members from different backgrounds. Uh, team members, you can have um, a Christian, a Muslim, and uh, a theist working together in a, in a team. And maybe because of one thing or the other, they start. So these are some of the issues you need to, to, uh, to look at. Make sure that everybody is respecting you, know, you must create a grand rule for people to respect people irrespective of um, religion, race, gender, all these things. It must be stated. And when team members are having conflicts, you must make sure that that conflict is resolved using your conflict management plan. You must have a conflict management plan before the project starts. In Aja, he said that when two team, um, two team members are having an issue, first thing to do is to, because they are mature people, try to allow them, give them room to manage, to, to, to resolve their conflicts first. And then you have to look at the, the root cause of that conflict and the, uh, uproot it. You can't just manage a conflict halfway. You must find good down the root cause. No matter what, you must go down the root cause of every, and you don't need to be bad when you're making your judgment. If they can't manage, if they can't resolve their, their conflict, you need to call them together, call them outside the, 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 the the work environment, try to resolve them. If you find, try to resolve and you find out that even you cannot resolve them, that's when, that's when you can maybe take it to the next level or uh, maybe the higher authority. The next thing is the people skills. You must have people skills. You must be able to, to work with people. You know how to, 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 to work with people, different type of people. That is called uh, 
PR, public relation. You must have this PR as, as, as a project manager. You must have a, a good PR to relate with people because you might you meet people, stakeholders, customers, um, developers, people. So project is a, a cross-functional team. People from different distance working together to deliver one solution. And everybody then are going to be their leader. So, and people have been doing it. So it's not a, a rocket science. Time management. You must know how to manage your time very well. You need to um, Another important way of managing time is uh, try to um, create to do. What needs to be done, you need to create to do and assign time to it. You know, and set um, alerts on your time shed, uh, on your time schedules to trigger, and let you know. So when you have um, like you see when I was showing um, uh, um, base camp, you see the time there, the all the the to do, the one you create to do, you assign the everything to call time. You manage, you look at all those time. So if you look at the the Microsoft two um, Microsoft Office um, project, when you are managing it, there is a time management there. That's the importance of time management. You must have to look for the best solution to manage your time. And outside the solution, you must be a principle within yourself to follow your time. That's the only way you can manage your project on time and on budget. If you are not um, a good time manager, it's going to be difficult for you as a project manager. Decision making, you need to be a good decision maker. You need to be decisive when you want to take action. You know, some people find it very difficult uh, to, to, to make the fixed decision. As a project manager, when, so when you are asked a question about something, you need to be certain. You don't need to answer maybe. Maybe is not a good uh, answer. And it's not a good response from a good uh, project manager. You need to be decisive. If you don't know what to say, say I don't know, I don't, I do not understand. Don't uh, uh, presume. You must be decisive. Decision making is very key to project management. I I'll say something about leading by example. Leading by example is uh, being. Uh, a servant leader. A servant leader will lead by example. You don't wait, you don't just relax and keep giving order. You, you need, to, uh, you need to, to engage, you need to participate, do it, do it, so that people will know that, yes, that it can be done. The one you, if more especially if you want something you can do, you do it. If you need to, uh, a meeting is by, like what I said before, be the first time to come so that others will know you are doing it. When you are preaching about, uh, when you're preaching against late coming, people will know that you have always been doing the best thing. So that's the way you lead by example. Self motivation. You need to be uh, a motivator, you need to motivate your team. At times, you find out. Your team might just, uh, the problem or just have a, a, a very big uh, issue. You may need to deliver this project on time and on budget, and there is a situation. You need to motivate your team that we can do it. You need to show, even if it's very difficult, don't need to start panicking while you are the leader. As a captain, when the captain is uh, start panicking, then the whole team become uh, you know, all the way start from the team members. 
have been in a flight when we are having a, 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 strong, a, a, a serious turmoil on the air. And as a good um, pilot, you just communicate the people, hey, take calm, everything is not, I don't need to panic, it's just a, a normal. The pilot might know that there is a situation, but as a pilot, you don't need to start panicking. Everybody, there is a situation. Everybody. You need to keep on encouraging them. That is, everything is under control. Even they, so, this is the way to motivate your team. Another one is if, if you find out that maybe a team member is struggling, like that I've just given you people um, assignment to do. You see, some people are struggling to do it. Encourage them, motivate them. You can do it. Look, all others are doing it. They are not better off. You can do it. Or try to come closer, find out what's the situation with the person. And then know how you, you can assist the person. You need to motivate your team. Use any kind of motivational approach to keep your team going, even in a difficult time. Emotional intelligence is still very important. You know, we need to, to at times use emotional uh, to, 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 to carry a team. If you see somebody, uh, a team member passing through difficult situation, you should be able to understand and know how to apply emotional intelligence on the person, even if the person is performing below capacity, you know? You can see somebody performing, you find out that maybe the person having a, a family challenge, challenges or family issues, you know. The best, pro, the best project uh, team member might start having a, a, a family situation that's weighing the person down. And you find out the, the, the performance um, of gone down. So you need to come in and encourage as much as you can, even if it means telling the person to take some time off to calm down. You need to do it, even if take move going extra mile to to try to solve um, a problem for your team member. That's how you earn their respect. That's how they, I mean, they they earn your respect because. They know you have you you always been there. You have been a leader. A project manager is a leader. So you must have all these skills, these soft skills. So when you combine these soft skills with technical skills, then you deliver a project. You don't have any problems. So that is it. Um, about um, soft skill. So I need to, um, ask, uh, some question before we crack up so to know if you people are following or not. So any questions? Uh, should I crack on? No answer. Uh, 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 precious, precious. Okay. okay. So good evening, sir. Yeah. Good um, evening. This is just a bit of um some of the charts um like when you were teaching us um on some of the project management tools. Um, sorry. Let me let me check my notes. I wrote the question. So on on one of those charts, you know, on one side of the chart, you will see the tax, the responsible peer persons, the date started. What is the, what is the name of the software you're talking about? Okay, like the project management tool. Which or, particular, which tool are you talking about? We have so many tools with um, which particular tool. Is it uh, also um, uh, Microsoft project or is it a uh, project labor or which tool? Is the Microsoft tools, but basically all the tools. My question is just for basically all the tools. Now, okay. on some 
tools there. On one side of it, you will see name, you will see duration, you will see um, start date and end date. My question is, when you see all of all that, when you, when you as a project manager, you put those charts or you put those things on the side of the, on one side, does it automatically generate the GAN chart for you or you have to generate the GAN chart yourself? The GAN chart, the GAN chart is the representation of what is um, in your plan. You don't need to generate the GAN chart. The okay. GAN chart, as, as, as you're adding, you are making input on your, on your project management, um, for instance, um, uh, Microsoft project. When you're adding the name, the date, everything, after adding all those things, the gun chart will appear. Okay, okay. You, That's don't, what need I would... do, you don't need to do anything. And okay. when you are not when you are not respecting your input, you are the one who, who make that input. You say you are going to use um some amount of money. You say you are going to start this date, you say you are going to finish date. At the end of the duration, and you didn't do what you said. The gun chart will reflect it. You see, like in gun chart, somewhere be recorded or error or something showing that there is a lag from your own side that you are not performing. That's how you track the performance of your project. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. That's what just wanted to know. Okay. Any other uh, question? Yes. Um, I, I don't know whether to ask it. What I noticed, like I watched when I was preparing my Lucy chat and I watched them um, some YouTube videos. Um, mm. it showed that some of those shapes there are not just shapes, they are they are actually representation of different things. So maybe mm. I don't so let's just continue. Let's just continue. I don't know how to point this question the way I want to ask. I it. understand what you mean. Every yes. every shape in uh, all those charts represent something. It's either is it represent the beginning of a process, yes. it, or it represent the end of a process, or it represent a process itself, or it represent the decision time in a process. Yes. So that's how it works. So, but we are not uh, treating um, Lucid chart as a tool or draw the tile as a tool in project management because these are the key tool in business analysis. So that will be treated in business analysis, not in project management. Okay, thank you. So the way Microsoft, um, Microsoft projects is the key tool in project management or project labor, these are the key tools because this is what you use to plan your projects. These are the key tools in project management. Lucid Charts, uh, which is uh, an alternative to this Microsoft Visio. These are the key uh, tools in business analysis. And you must learn how to do it. You can't run away from it. You must learn it. They must be your friend because you must be using it to map out your processes. You hear about uh, requirement documentation. These are the documentation we are talking about. All those maps. Very soon you start seeing it um, as sis and uh, to be. The current uh, state, the future state, gap analysis. This is what you'll be hearing. The requirement prioritization. Requirement uh, this, requirement that, but that is, um, that is for business analysis. So in project management, you should concentrate on how to make sure that the project is being delivered on time and on budget. Okay. So, yeah, any, any, okay, Richard, do you have anything? Yes. Uh, Okay. So uh, I want you to tell, tell me more about this, the Microsoft project and the Microsoft Office. You say they are more expensive because of that, because people cannot get it easily. They have not, there's an alternative like the base camp. 
And when you were talking, you said the base camp can do three projects at a time with 20 users. Oh, I want to say, uh, uh, let me project, begin now. Uh, please, somebody talk aloud, uh, the, the person talking late so I can hear the person very well. Base camp has, can do three projects at a time with 20 users. Mm -hmm. I want to know if Microsoft Project and Microsoft Office has can do more than three projects at a time with more users. Yeah, Microsoft. Um, micro, micro, Microsoft 365. That is the alternative of um, Basecamp. That's the Basecamp alternative. You can do as many projects and contain as many users as you want, as long as the organization are ready to pay. Because they are not free. Even um, Basecamp, Basecamp is not free. They just have free version. This free version is just that can help you um, handle three projects. And these three projects you can handle, in total of that three projects, you can have more than 20 users. For instance, now, let me give you an instance. Here and now in this uh, project, you people in this course, I have like, I think uh, 270 of you people in this program. And I can see that so many of you are very, very active so that you can make it uh, to the next level, which is a uh, work placement. You understand? Okay. How do I manage 270 users? Can you see that? And there is no free version. So this is a problem for you to see what's going on. Then at least up to um, at least up to 10 projects must be created for you people to manage. At least if you are sharing people in, let me say. 2020 or 3030 people per group. It does not like uh, around um, 10 projects, but this camp, you can't do it. You can't have more than three um, projects. So that's where you have uh, how wide projects. Uh, companies, um, it's not easy for companies. So, but that is left for. Um, for the organization to know how to do it. There are so many um, softwares, some organizations, they go about developing their own software. These are some of the ways some organizations, because all these ones are, it's not mean that this is the only way to manage projects. You can develop your own software. So many organizations can develop a clone of, um, Microsoft um, Office and start using people develop a uh, project labor because of this kind of situation, they develop project labor. And it start helping people. Just like now you see, um, we are spending a lot of money, even in this Zoom, we are paying to hold this Zoom. Because you, so many of you know that Zoom cannot just be, um, how many hours you use for free Zoom and how many people? So if, if, if you are trying looking at this, so that's why so many of us, uh, our organization, we are looking at developing our own Zoom, our own application like Zoom. This is a lot of money, but if you are looking at um, cost, if you, if you do your cost benefit analysis, it's going to be a benefit you maybe develop your own and own it, like the, 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 the kind of um, Zoom um, application, which I'm looking at developing, 
is the one that can contain up to um, even 1 million people at the same time and have endless meetings. So these are the things. So it's left for that's why so many organizations, you, you, you see them developing their own. But in the market, this is what is obtaining for now. So many companies, the, the what we are teaching you people is what so many companies are using. And even those developing their own application is almost the same thing. You find out that it's the same work suit or the same work space, almost the same workplace that um, Basecamp is using. That's the kind of um, work pay, uh, space we might develop. That's why it's, um, it's good to be a developer, like a, a software engineer, if you're a software engineer, a project manager, a business analyst, you'll be able to do a lot of things, develop a lot of things for yourself or for a business or your organization. But we are getting to that. We are in project management. Any more questions? Do we move on? Yeah, yes, move on, sir. Okay. okay, we'll go back to, to our slide. We are done with um, project management soft skills. What we will do now is uh, project management life cycle. We are looking at a framework that will help us to manage a project end to end. End to end means from the beginning to the end. A project management that is a life cycle. When we're talking about a life cycle, we're talking about when something begins and the when the something ends. Like my own life cycle is from my date of birth from the day they will bury me. That is going to be my life cycle. So so we're going to look at how can you combine all these applications, these methodologies, these tools together and uh, deploy a project from beginning to the end. And if you look at the, the work break, breakdown structure you created, I've given you a kind of insight of what a life cycle is. You see, you started from initiate. But there is an um, area um, I, re I removed, control. Because the control, you find out that you control your project from the beginning to the end. Is it not true? That's how it is. You control a project from beginning to end. So instead of putting control, like making the life cycle into five stages, the life cycle here become four stages. So framework is necessary um, to ensure structure when managing a project. And is the catalyst for managing a project from initiation through to closure. So here we have, um, four stages in the project we are going to be using to, to deliver our projects. The framework we are going to be using to deliver our projects will have in, in the initial stage. Mm -hmm. I want to make this thing clear. If my, my class is going on, and I mute you and you unmute yourself, I will throw you out and I'll delete your name from this class. Not even from the, the, the main 
list of people and I will, I'll block you everywhere. Sorry, sir. You are intentionally doing that. You don't you just know when you put your list in. It's not like you don't know what you are doing. We all are adults. If you don't want to stop disturbing others. So, like I said, in four stages, you initiate, you define, you execute, and you close. Simple. In the very first three, four simple stages, that's how you manage a project. So, if you, are, if you understand these things very well, you find that managing projects becomes so easy. You know what you are doing at any point in time. Well, let's look at the first stage, which is initiate, how you initiate a project, what you are going to do. Like now, I assign you people, you, you go to your, your work um, placement and you'll be assigned a group and the project will happen to be given to you people to deliver. How do you deliver the project with all these things I've been teaching with all these methodologies, with all these applications, with all these uh, soft skills, how do you apply all these things together to manage these projects? At which stage are you applying all these skills? At which stage are you bringing this to? Uh, so this is what project management life cycle is all about. It help you to know when you are you like if you are cooking a soup. You don't just pack, uh, uh, put everything in the soup together. No. You know when you are putting the meat. You know when you are start boiling the water. You know when you even start washing the pots. You even know when you, you, you make a list of the, the condiment, the recipes you need. You know, you know when you go to market, you come back from market. You start washing your pot. From washing your pot, you start, uh, you put the gas uh, on, you start boiling water. You put your, you wash your meat, you put your meat. You put, um, you put salt, you put pepper, you put onions, you put everything. And then you know the time it will take for the, uh, maybe the meat, the hardest, um, uh, part of ingredient, the ingredients in the meat will be done. And you finish cooking. So that's how a project is. So you know when you are bringing this in and when you are not bringing this. You can't just pack everything. It's not going to make a good uh, product. So how do we do that? We start from initiates. As initiates, that's the first thing you need to do. Initiate the project. How do you initiate the project? These are the tasks in this stage. What the first thing you need to do, like when you have your team ready now for your work placement, the next thing you need to do is, by then you must have a project manager. One of you is going to be a project manager. One of you is going to be, um, uh, all of you are going to be project managers and all of you are going to be, uh, but you need to have a lead project manager because by the time I, I'm finished with you guys, you guys are project managers already. So all you need is to do your first job. So you need to have a, a, a project lead and then you need to have a, a business analyst lead. I'm not playing about this noise making. Very soon now people start calling me names. But I'm very wicked. I'm this and that. So 
Um, the first thing you need to do as a project manager is to receive the project mandate. Project mandate is the project brief. What are you going to be doing for this in this project? What is the problem we are going to solve? What do we need to get done? Maybe, um, for instance, let me say, when um, we are, we are, we are like a Facebook, a company, and uh, we needed something to drive more customers. We needed to engage our 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 users the more. And then we started we decided that we need to create um, a video ray, just like they just created now. That can be a project mandate to create a video ray and add it to our platform. This is a big project. So when you receive this project mandate as a project manager, the next thing is to commence with the kickoff meeting. Once you receive it, you call a meeting. You call a meeting to tell your team that, yeah, we are starting a project. You need to, to look for all the people involved. And if, in the, if it's in the base camp that you guys are using, there is a, you go to base camp, make announcements, put a date, and they publish it. And everybody uh, in that group will see that the project manager have made an announcement. And this is a kickoff meeting. You decide how you are going to do the meeting. Is it going to be? as it's going to be remote, then we decide. If it's um, Zoom you people are using, you create a Zoom um, uh, meeting uh, ID and share it in that uh, with your announcements that people can see the ID and login they are going to use for the meeting. And on the meeting date, then you commence the meeting to tell your team members about the project. That's what um, um, kickoff meeting is. And then after the kickoff meeting, you let them know what you guys are going to be doing. You have, you have received the project mandate. Then with, uh, with the uh, project mandate, you know what you are going to be doing. Then you have to identify the roles and responsibilities. You need to identify because you are going to do this, you need a developer. You need a, um, a scrum master. You need a business analyst. You need a, you need a tester. These are the people that you need to identify, identify. And to identify all these things, you people remember, I say something about racing matrix when we are starting, this is the time you are going to pull your racing matrix to use it. That's how all these templates work. All these um, uh, techniques work. You go and pull your uh, racing matrix template to, to identify, that's why you start using it. You call um, John. Okay, John is uh, the business analyst. This is what John should be doing. Um, Cynthia, Cynthia is a tester. This is what Cynthia will be doing. So that's how you identify roles and responsibilities. After then, then you identify the scope of the work. To identify the scope, this is the time you go and uh, pull the project charter to look at the scope, what you guys need to be done. Is in the project. You see all these things. So I say this is time you start pulling them. It's time to go and look for project charter. If uh, there is no project charter, you need to create a project charter. 
Uh, at this time, I believe the management must have created the project charter. If they don't, it's time you work with the stakeholders to identify the scope, create a project charter. You must identify the scope, you know, and plan the scope around the scope. When these are done, and to do that scope, you need to do it with business analysts. So when that is done, you need to select the project approach and methodology. You see, your project, uh, we have been talking about um, agile methodology. We talk about waterfall. We talk about um, Six Sigma. We talk about lane. This is the time you need to identify which one are we going to use. It's going to be a meeting. You are, you are not going to select it on your own. If a management, there is a management policy that this is the particular approach you are going to use. You don't need to, you just start using the, 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 the one, the management, maybe the company is using. Some company have policies. We use waterfall, we don't use any other thing. So even if you don't, you, you prefer using a agile methodology. No, you have to use uh, what the company wants. But if you have a, a free hand to select the kind of uh, methodology you have, then it's time for you to, on your team, to look, in short, this project, the best approach is to use met um, agile methodology. Then you could choose agile. When you start using agile methodology, you can't go halfway and say, no, we are not going to use agile methodology. We are going to now start using a, um, a waterfall. Or those, most of the time, during scope definition or during project, uh, project charter, the approach that will be used is contained in the project charter. So if it's contained in the project charter, you follow everything that the project charter says. Then you have to then outline the goals of the project. If you look at the project charter, the goals of the project is already outlined there. So that's why you have to work with the project charter at all, at all time. You put, that's how we are pulling all these things. So after all this, the next, identify the key stakeholders so you can analyze them and know how we are going to work with them and reach the expectation. To do that, we've said something about stakeholder analysis. You then we can bring all those documents we, we discuss about stakeholders management and do your stakeholder analysis. Uh, you have um, a stakeholder uh, power grid. You bring it to do analysis and know where every stakeholder. You have stakeholder um, engagement worksheets. Then that's where you, you bring it to start plotting your stakeholder where you want them to be and where you want them to engage. Then you have a stakeholder communication uh, worksheet. Then you bring it and then start deciding how to communicate your stake plan, how to communicate your stakeholders, the method of communication, how often do you communicate with them. That is how you, you plan it. Then the next thing is you create a business case. A business case will analyze the, the best solution, the best technology that you will use to deliver this um, uh, project. How much is it going to cost? So this is mainly the job of a business analyst. Is the business analyst that mainly does business case to justify why this project must happen and the best solution to create this pro, um, product. So when this is done, the business case is created then and they're validated because once it's created, you have to submit it for the management to approve. Once it's approved, then you know that uh, the project have uh, started. So in this regard, business case 
is the is the um, milestone in this stage. This next case, we bring the initiate stage to an end. This is the justification stage at the initial stage of a project. It answers the following questions. Is the project justifiable? Is it worth investing in this project? Is it viable? All these questions will be answered by the business case. And that is the initiate stage. Once you pass this process, then you have successfully initiated the project. And then the project has been initiated. The next thing is to define the project. Defining the project is designing. That's when you start designing the solution. You have been given a go ahead order to start designing the solution. So if it's, for instance, um, is a building, let me use a, 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 an estate, a rehouse construction. The final stage is when you know you are going to build um, five bedroom duplex. It has been approved that you are going to build five bedroom duplex. Also, so, so, um, place in Victoria Island. So you have, you have been approved. We are going to do that. Yeah, but it needs to be designed now. So that's when the management, um, the designers, the, the, the designer here is the business analyst. You know, this is the designer. The business analyst is the solution designer. So business analysts got a lot to do in a project. And at this point, as the project manager, the project has started and this is where the risk starts. You can start facing risk at any point in time from this point. So the first thing is as the project manager is to plan for your raid. Raid is risk management meeting. So you start looking at your RAID, how you manage all the risks that are associated by them, you must have done your risk, um, risk plan. You start RAID meeting. Maybe that will be every, like the, some of the projects I handle I, as a project manager. My RAID meeting is every week. You help me to, to tackle any kind of issues. And when I start as um, when the scrum starts, I have a daily scrum. So, but at this point in time, you have not started uh, your scrum. So at this point, it's better to start having weekly meetings to look at the risks. And then this time you start because the project has started in facilitating workshops with your group to look at who is doing who, what is happening, what is the, there must be a lot of, you know, meetings going on at this point in time, either with the, the, the business analysts or, or the web designers. Or, so these are the, the time then this is the time you start this uh, work break, breakdown structure. You start work, working on it again, because work breakdown structure, though you can start it from um, the fine stage, but this is where the main activities. In this stage, there is a work, break, a work breakdown structure again. You keep on breaking your work, the, 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 the work down. It cannot just be from the defined is so it is an activity that keep on going. You break what should be done down and then start assigning all these things. Then you manage, monitor, and control all 
key areas. As a business, as a project manager, this is time you start managing everywhere. Looking at it, that's when I said that uh, control shouldn't be a one-off thing. Like the work breakdown structure I gave to you people, you see that there is control in one area, uh, which means that at this point in time, you start control. I disagree with that because control starts from day one. So you keep on monitoring and controlling. As a business analyst, I mean, as a project manager, this is the time you start allocating budgets. You must have done your, your budget, your budgeting, estimates. You know how much you are going to use, but this is the time you start spending it. So you have to start allocating it while you are creating your, your project plan. This is the time you create your project plan. In your project plan, you start allocating um, uh, you start allocating uh, budget and resources. During the uh, work break, breakdown structure, that's when you create the project plan. Using Microsoft, uh, for instance, you can use Microsoft um, project to create it. That is all this um, critical uh, part. It's still the same thing with uh, work, breakdown, work breakdown structure. Critical part and work breakdown, they are doing the same thing. So that's when you create it. And then here you start allocating budgets and resources. And before the projects start proper, there's what we call a benefit review plan. You need to review the benefits that's going to be derived from this project before the, the implementation starts. You call it benefit review plan. Because at this point in time, When you enter execution, it's just like you started a, a construction start site. You start laying foundation, molding block, start you know the messing. They start building the house. So this is the time for the final designing and planning. In this stage, the project kicks off. Once the scope has been defined and agreed by the senior stakeholder, the project just takes off. So this is the kind of the last stage of any kind of planning. And then the next thing will be execution. We'll go to execution. So during the execute, that's when all these things start deploying or everything. You build and test uh, functional and non-functional requirements. That's when you start um, building all these things. Requirements, all the requirements that the business analyst created. Uh, if it's um, uh, e-commerce website, this will have this is time. You start creating all these things. The developers will start coding, creating it, and to do that, we need to employ, um, for instance, most of the things we are going to be is going to be software development. So that's why I put software development life cycle, SDLC. So it's going to, I will make our time to talk about software development life cycle of this code. But most of the time we can look at it, I love it because we can look at it, um, in a, in a business analysis. Well, because it's the business analysis um, that would design most of the things in software. So that's why, but I just put it here because it's part of the project. So that's where we apply software development life cycle because what we are going to be creating most of the time is a software, it's not a construction project. So you create this plan, Every um, functionality that you are creating in a software, you must create a test plan. The test plan is that after creating it, you must test it. After creating it, you must test it. 
um, that is um, what uh, we call test plan. It must come out the way we want it to be. If after creating it and we test it and uh, it didn't work, then we go back and uh, uh, recreate it and then test it again. So we keep on creating and testing it until it passes the test. It must pass the test. So we have uh, test cases, we have test plan templates, which will be given or you see how to create a test. Uh, you need to, as a, uh, although this is the job of um, a business analyst. Business analyst creates the test cases, test plans, but it's here because it's a project management we are talking about. The project manager must be there to see, but it's not the duty of the project manager to create all these test cases and test plan. It's the duty of the business analyst. So, and then when all these things are created, you start scrum meeting. During your scrum meeting, that's when you go, you move to, um, to J, uh, Jira. And in the JIRA, that's where you create managing your, your scrum, creating sprints, having, after having sprint meeting uh, from daily scrum to um, sprint review to sprint retrospective. That's why I said you need to read Agile, I mean, a scrum guide. I'm not going to teach people, uh, I'm not going to read school because everything is more, it's very clean there. Most people just read it up on their own. It's very, very clear. Also, it's not ambiguous. So you have to read the uh, Scrum guide for you to understand very well how Scrum has taught you people about Scrum. It's going to be the way, that is the framework you are going to be using to be managing and develop, uh, deploy your, uh, um, your product. So, and then you lead cross-functional team. As a project manager, then you are not going to be a, pro a project manager. You are going to be a scrum master. So, as a scrum master, you'll be leading a cross-functional team, making sure that everything is working, you know, managing the projects, solving problems. By then, the, the Scrum uh, team is already started working. Let's look at um, uh, this um, Jira. Yeah. So at this point in time, this is where you people will be. This is the software you'll be using, you know. This is the roadmap, like this is um, the workflow now. See, everybody started doing something. Developers now started coding and moving from one stage to another. So at this point in project management, at this execution stage, this is where you are going to be. This is how it's going to look like in Jira. Or in Trello, if you are using Trello, this is how it's going to be looking at at this point because the work has started. This is how it's going to be looking at. So that's why I say that in this um, uh, project management life cycle, this is the time you'll be bringing, you know which application you use at any point in time each application you use at any point in time. So we are at execute stage. So it's here about sprint planning. Sprint planning takes place in this place in Scrum. And the software tool you use to do this is Jira. That's where you do your uh, uh, sprint review. Sprint review is that after the end of the sprint, um, after the end of the sprint, which the time duration it takes to develop a piece of software, 
you go and they review it with your um, stakeholders. You show them what you've done and they will see what you've done. And within this time, every day, you'll be having daily stand-up. That's when you, you as a team, you come to tell uh, what have you done, what are you, did you do yesterday, what, have you, what are you going to do today, and um, have you having, are you having any challenges, what are, the, what are the challenges? These are the time all these things take place. All these things take place during the execution stage. Because that time, the real life work has started. The coding has started. The developers have started coding the real um, things and the testing start going on and deployment start going on. As you can see here, you look at this diagram, you see the work is now going on here. Everybody, the crane person, everybody is busy now, the work has started. So that is it. This is when we begin to build and develop our product. Within the acceptance criteria and quality outline at the initiate stage. So these are the things. What we agreed from the beginning that we are going to do, this is the time we are doing it live. So that is it. That is the execute stage of a project life cycle. And after the execute stage, the next thing is closure stage. When you have uh, built the whole thing, uh, test it and deploy it, and it's now working, the customers, everybody is happy, the stakeholders is happy, then you are done with your project. It's now to close the project. When you are deploying uh, software, everything is working. You don't just uh, carry a bag and go home. You need to do closing. That is a closure stage. At the closure stage, you need to obtain client acceptance form. For instance, you are working for a client, you need to uh, get acceptance form. The, the client needs to sign a form for you, uh, showing that uh, he uh, how they are happy with the, the work you've done or the company is happy with the work you've done. You need to get it validated. Acceptance form must be signed. You know, if you are working in uh, your own company, so the product owner or the sponsor within the company is a senior manager, whoever initiated the project should be your client. He should form, act, act as a client in this regard. He must accept that people who have finished the, the job and uh, validate that the job is done and is accepted. He meets the requirements, the acceptance criteria. And then here, all the rates you close. RAID is a risk. When you are managing uh, RAID, you open some. All this risk will be open until you resolve it. When you have a risk, you can't close it until you resolve it. That's issues. You know? So that's how to manage issues. So by this time, the project is closed. So you have to close all the open rate because the project is finally closed. So there is no risk we are talking about again. And because the project we are talking about, even if there is a risk, you should close everything because there is no more risk after all the project. Uh, the acceptance form has been accepted, showing that the project is over. So you have to close all the rate that's been open, trying to resolve. There are nothing to resolve again. So I want to close all the rates, then you need to uh, do a post implementation review. Now we have uh, developed a piece of software for this company. How are they going to manage it from there? How do you go from here? The software is there. The software is just like a house. It needs maintenance. The software is just like a car. If you, if you buy a car or produce or develop a car, or if you build a house, there must be a plan on how 
to maintain the house. It's why either you find um, a real estate uh, firm to manage the house for you, or you know how to manage the house for yourself, or you are living, if you are living in the house, you must know how, even if you are living in the house, you must know how to manage it because there, there will be kind of uh, tear and wear. So there should be post implementation review. Post means how do you manage it from here? It must be stated as a, because you develop the solution. You must know the best way to manage the solution because your clients don't have knowledge, much knowledge, technical knowledge of that solution. So you create it and give it to them because after that, you might not come back to do that for them. So they have to manage it themselves. They might look for other project managers or business analysts or developers in future because after they might find yourself in another project. So you must create a post implementation review for them. Then you do, after then, you close the project, that closure meeting. You call your team, you have a meeting, or everybody discuss. And you have a closure meeting that the project is closed and you celebrate. And lesson learned report, you must write a lesson learned report. It must be documented and hand over to the company to, to file in the project repository so that all the mistakes you've made, all the real challenges you've had to be there. So when they are implementing a similar project, they will just go and they pull the lesson learned report. Oh, this is the, the kind of challenges associated with this problem. A, a, a smart project manager, if you if you want to start a project, you just ask, is there any lesson learned report uh, uh, associated with this kind of? If they say yes, you just get it. You know what what the former project managers have been seeing the challenges. You use it as you know to learn how to navigate your own project. That's the importance of lesson learned report. So you put, after then you upload all the um, documents on the repositories and then end project closure reports where you add hand the, to the management and the pro project is closed. And this point in time, we have delivered it. Um, deliver their project on time and on budget. And that's it. Con congratulations. You've, you've made it. So uh, at this point in time, I, I'll, I'll tell you that <clears throat> you are now a half-bit project manager. So that is it. And that's all we have for project management. Um, the other things we'll be doing is we'll come, make our time to come and learn some of these um, softwares like uh, Microsoft um, Project, Project Labor, um, um, Basecamp, Jira, and the rest of them. And we are done with project management. So more assignments will be coming from this um, software itself, which we are going to be looking at for you to, to understand it um, better. So yeah, that's all about project management. Even if you go to, if you are working with, uh, working in White House, this is what you are going to be. There is nothing different. This is what you need to do there. There's nothing else you need to do there except what I've just said here, as long as it's project management. So, um, any questions? Yes, sir. Okay. Uh, good evening, Mr. Charles. Uh, yeah, there is noise from the background. Okay, is it better now? Okay. Hello? It's yeah. better, right? I'm sorry yeah. about that. Good evening, and thank you for the class. It's quite mm -hmm. a lightning. 
please, I just want to find out whose job is it to design the project charter? Is it the job of the stakeholders, top management, or the project manager? Is a is a collaborative effort. The 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 project manager need to be there. Um, the business analysts need to be there. The stakeholders need to be there because it's the time to understand what the stakeholders want. Need to, this, this, this time the stakeholders need to say, this is what to achieve. This is our problem. We're having these challenges and we want it done. We want it solved. So the business analysts need to be, because business analysts is more uh, technically oriented, they need to look. Well, looking at the the their challenges, the business analyst might use his uh, technical knowledge to look at solution and know exactly what they are looking at achieving. So, the, it's a collabor is a collaborative effort. So that's why I said you, you look once you get the project, you look for your stakeholders to. To get um, uh, the project charter done, but uh, at times you find out that as a as a as a project manager, there are some projects you might manage. You find out that there is already uh, a project charter. Maybe the project mm -hmm. charter, the the, the 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 stakeholders can work with business yeah. analyst can work with business analysts alone. To create a project chapter and hand it over to you, the project manager. So what I'm asking is possible for a project to already have a charter even before the project yeah. manager is engaged to handle the project. Yes, can okay. have a project charter before that. Okay, thank you very but much. But if you if you don't have a project charter, you can create it, but you can't create it alone. You can create it okay. um, together with your stakeholders. Thank you, sir. Yeah, you're welcome. So any more questions? OK, because um, we're actually done with project management. Uh, I'll make a uh, time within the week um i know it's not going to be um tomorrow but i'll create time to teach you uh you people about some of these softwares so look at it uh, briefly in real time just the way i navigated around base camp it makes more sense to see to see it being Use in real time and just look at the, looking at the pictures. So that's what we are going to do, and then um, we'll start preparing for. And maybe I'll give you assignment. The assignment is going to be you must create um, a work from. Uh, I know you people don't have access to Microsoft projects, but you can have access to Project Labor. So you need to download Project Labor. If you have not downloaded it, you need to download it because that is uh, where the first um, um, assignment will come. You need to create a critical part, which is um, a work break breakdown structure as well in um, Project Labor. You need to create it. That's what we are going to create. That's going to be a assignment, although I'm going to document it and uh, put it on the notice board. But that is what you are going to do. Because you cannot tell me you are a project manager and you don't even know how to create a project plan. I'm not going to be the instructor that we approve that. So that's what you are going to do. Because when you go on your, your work uh, placement, it's not the time to start teaching your people um, how to create a project uh, charter. 
or how to start creating work breakdown structure or how to create a project plan. You are not going to be, uh, no one is going to teach you people how to do that. All you be is just to give you a project mandate for you to go and deliver and then work. So it's better to learn how to do all these things now. Um, Chigo, so you, you say you have a question, but I think you have a question, you, know, you keep keep quiet, you don't want to talk, so. Hello. Okay, at uh, this point, uh, I'll say good night to everyone. Good night, sir. Yeah. Good night, sir.